Greetings folks, in this video I'm going to be having a look at the PWM control of the Caddx GM3 gimbal. I've previously done a head tracking video, pure head tracking, uh, but now I've connected the uh, little PWM cable that gives head tracking plus PWM. I've had to change to a different plane uh, so that I had enough spare PWM outputs from the flight control board because uh, there's you need four PWM outputs. PWM1 from the gimbal switches modes, or basically one, two or three follow axes. PWM2 is the gain or the sensitivity for that follow axis, so if you turn it right up to 15, uh, the gimbal follows the plane a lot more closely, which is probably the way I like it, rather than if you turn the gain down, uh, it's more self-leveling. PWM3 is the pan control and PWM4 is the tilt control. And I have them set up on my uh, FR Sky X14S. I needed to change transmitter as well uh, to get the extra switches and, uh, and uh, available sliders and things like that. So we're all ready to go. Let's go for a fly. Get him up there. Cruise mode. And we'll have a look. So, yeah, lovely spot to fly here. I've got miles and miles of uh, deserted coastline here. Don't want to get too far away in case something odd happens. And the good thing about not using the head tracker is uh, my head can always be pointing at the plane. All right, so I have no PWM control at the moment, and this is in mostly follow mode. This is in the three axis follow, so it will follow the plane. If I turn the gain down, I can't see where I'm flying, can I? All right, I'll leave it turned up. All right. Come back this way. I thought I'd have more of the nose in the view. Uh, I can't really see what the plane's doing, can I? That's uh, unfortunate. I can if I tilt it back down a bit. All right, so I'll switch on the, the head tracker now and I can tilt the camera down. There we go, now we've got a bit of nose. That's what I need to see. And I can pan around. Oh yeah, look at that. Magnificent. So I've got the uh, PWM channels, uh, the mode selector on channel 9, the gain on channel 10, and the, the pan and tilt on 11 and 12. And I've, I've sort of reduced the rate of the down and up because that was going way too far up and down. I've slowed it down a bit. And I've reduced the rate and added some sort of slow action to the pan. Just to smooth it down a little bit, but uh, you can see that's working really nicely now. Great spot to fly here. Slight onshore wind, but uh, it's nice and smooth. So that's just centered the gimbal again. Actually, what I'll do, I'll turn the, uh, the gain for the follow down. So now you can see the plane moves around in the view a bit more. Turn it all the way down and it's almost totally self-leveling. Turn it up again, and we're following the plane a lot more. Really do need to see a bit of the nose, just for security, I think, but uh, this is cool. All right, so now we've got 
in the second mode, which is turn the game down. So that is, oh, I can't tell in cruise mode, can I? It's uh, into acro mode. You can see that is keeping the horizon more level. I need cruise mode to see how I'm flying. And the, the final position actually tilts the... Um, oh, I've got auto-tune on there, maybe. Maybe that's why it is. Yeah, it's confusing it a bit. So that is the uh, only one-axis follow. I prefer the three-axis follow like it is here with the gain turned right up so that it's not self-leveling uh, and it just feels more natural to me. And I've got the camera tilted down a little bit just so I can see the nose. Cruising along. Great stuff. You can select head tracker but uh, you have to come in and land, change to head tracker, cycle the power to the gimbal before it will take effect. 